I found one of our missing aliens. And whatever he is inside that armor, we do not want to let him out. After learning about Greg's plans through Galapagos in the last episode, we start delving deeper into the story arc of UA by tracking down Pandor, the third of the missing Andromeda Five. Introducing Pandor by having him bribe criminals into breaking him out of his armor is not only a great way to show what kind of person he is, but it's also a nice change up from the usual way episodes have been starting lately, which is the trio responding to a mission. It also shows just how strong and durable NRG's armor is when Ben unlocks that form. Kevin participating in that ties the threat together with the main story, and also gives us more examples of Kevin's criminal habits outside of offhand comments. Having him getting knocked out after saying this, Nothing's harder than Tate night! <laughs> is pretty lame. Genius move for Ben to pretend to be bivalvin by turning into water hazard. One of the most underutilized perks of turning into an alien would be to disguise yourself, so it's great to see that feat represented here. While seeing Ben use Ultimate Humongousaur was a cool sequence, he chose to use him against three common criminals, and it keeps feeling like the show has no idea what it really wants to do with this feature. If Ben's really afraid of his ultimate forms like he claims in the episode Fame, but he keeps using them against degrade threats like pickaxe aliens and humans with power saws, how are we really supposed to feel about them? I like that pan Andor was treated like a full-on antagonist, unlike by Valvin and Galapagos, which were both misunderstandings. Pandor is a bad dude, and unfortunately deserves to be locked away in that armor, and yet you still sort of feel bad for him when the trio starts treating him like an actual criminal, especially when Kevin wants to fight him rather than help him. The two ways to look at it are even reflected in this episode, which temporarily turns Kevin and Gwen away from each other. It's also nice to not only have Kevin not give Gwen any flack for being wrong about Pandor, but be encouraging in the end based on the advice he gave her. You guys have been thinking with your fists instead of your brains. But you're not protected like me and Ben. Think with your brains, not your fists. It shows a lot about how even though Kevin's a pretty questionable guy, he's a lot more caring, respectful, and mature than he used to be. The three goons Pandor teams up with are your typical run-of-the-mill, one-episode-only kind of goons. But since they aren't main protagonists, their lack of development doesn't really affect the story, but it does make their scenes less interesting. The water hazard versus NRG fight is definitely the visual highlight. The choreography, animation, and the effects were all stellar. In fact, this whole episode had a lot of great moments too. But it's also funny to see Gwen take a blast of radiation straight to the face. Although, after everything we've seen her go through in the series, it's pretty believable. The animation is definitely some of the best we've seen in Ultimate Alien so far. Ultimate Humongousaur's transformation is the best going Ultimate sequence out of the ones featured too. And we also get to see Ultimate Cannonbolt, making this the first episode where two Ultimates are used. And Pandora's animation outside of the armor is mesmerizing. It's very fluid, and his shape is always changing. He moves around very similarly to Goop, except more stretching than full on shape-shifting. While by Valvin's debut episode lays out the new themes for Ultimate Alien, and Galapagos gives us more story info, Pandora's debut is less of a critical entry. Now that we have an understanding that Greg is looking for these aliens, and by the season 1 finale we know he ends up succeeding in recapturing them, this episode adds to the story, but it's less vital to a full-on binge. But it's still a pretty great watch, definitely the most visually striking of Ultimate Alien so far, and the plot is pretty enjoyable too. I think Ultimate Alien is on a good path now after its rough start, so let's hope things continue going in this well for the rest of season one. That leaves two of Agrigor's former captives at large. Hopefully they'll be a little more cooperative than Pandor. 